Welcome to another video of Careers Express brought to you by the Cyprus Mail, where job seekers and professionals can stay up to date with what matters most in our world of work. Today, our topic is mental health and burnout in the workplace, especially the remote workplace. Joining me for our discussion is the Head of Global People Development at Exnes, Elena Krutova. Elena, welcome. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Elizabeth. According to McKinsey, 90% of employers surveyed said COVID-19 is affecting workforce mental health and productivity, including 75% of Gen Z employees. How would you say the traditional approach to employee mental health concerns has been up to now in Cyprus work culture? Thank you, Elizabeth, for this question. Uh, of course, it's obvious that after pandemic, uh, the many changes happened in the world. And the traditional approaches to mental health were quite limited. And the employers were thinking mainly about the medical insurance and to some extent, some entertainment or event activities for employees and the families. But as far pandemic happened, many employers started to think how to make the life of employees better, how to help them to feel better at work, especially when they are working remotely from home, alone with their families, with no connection to the colleagues or without these well-known human moments when you can talk to a person, when you can have a coffee with somebody from your team, when you can discuss some obvious questions which disturb you. And these forced the development of this mental health topics and the further attention from many companies all over the world. And right now, of course, we're all doing significantly more than what it was done before. So based on the stats that I shared earlier, would you say employers now are taking action in terms of mental health? If so, how? Yes, definitely we see many changes all over the world. Some companies started to introduce new practices towards mental health, starting from some uh, reactive activities, such as offering uh, psychological counseling to the employees, or some proactive activities, and we see press releases about the employers adding one more vacation day for mental health, probably, or reducing uh, working hours uh, on Fridays so people can spend more time with their families, or doing some other efforts globally in order to help Help employees to feel a bit better in current circumstances. So definitely the topic is emerging and we see good progress there. What are the integrated intervention strategies that XNES is implementing to support employee mental health? We are doing a lot in both directions. First of all, we are trying to prevent any signs of uh, burnout or any signs of mental health problems. And uh, this may start from some simple activities, like allow your employees to have the lunch without any disturbance and without any working meeting. Or it can be the rule that nobody sends any emails after 6 p.m. and any email sent uh, later should be answered only the next day. Or it can be some pro proactive discussions with invited speakers, how the company can support the employees and what are the signs about the mental health issue. And of course, we do a lot in terms of reactive measures. If some um, strange things happen, some employees may feel stressed, some employees may feel lonely, some employees may say that they are burning out and they need help. And in that circumstances, we as a company, we promote some activities and some tools, some uh, programs, some specialists even invited to the company to, ho to help people to be better. So you already mentioned some of the uh, strategies uh, implemented. Um, what are the integrated uh, overall uh, intervention strategies that Exnes is implementing to support employee mental health? Our overall approach that we believe that we need to treat our employees as human beings, as people with their concerns, and we need to take care of them as people and their families as a part of our community as well. Therefore, additionally to what I said, we're also trying to create the community for the families where all the family members can feel better together. So we do also some entertaining activities, educational activities for the spouses and the kids as well. And this brings huge value for us as an employer because we see that employees value that and also we know that this positively affects the performance of the employees. But at the end of the day, are companies investing enough on employee well-being? 
That's a good question because we may see a number of press releases when the companies are promoting themselves as someone who is doing a lot. But in reality, the employees can still suffer because mental health is not the topic you discuss every day. In many companies, it's forbidden to talk about that. Some employees may feel ashamed that if they address this topic, that they will not be considered as some strange people with some strange mental health problems. Therefore, it's still a discrepancy between what is said and between what is done. And one of our strategy here is to avoid this discrepancy because we don't want mental health topic to be stigmatized with this idea that this is not something normal which may happen to everyone. And we are trying to also promote the awareness that if you are struggling, you have to find a way to address that without fear being punished for the, this or without a fear being uh, considered as a strange person with strange uh, needs. You mentioned the discrepancy. Um, we also can uh, consider that as a disconnect as well, because when we listen to employees, there is a significant disconnect in meeting their needs. So what do you believe are the causes of this disconnect and how can employers overcome it? I believe in honesty and transparency. And whatever you are trying to do, you need to do it with all your heart. And therefore, if the company declares that they are taking care of mental health of the employees, the efforts should be significant enough in order to prove that we are doing our best. And this discrepancy happens when you say something and then you do something opposite. For example, you are promoting mental health topic and you are saying that you are taking care of this, but at the same time, employees are working till 9 p.m. every day and every email may be set even like late in the midnight. This is not right. Therefore, we as a company, we believe that all our actions should be supported uh, respectively and all our, our all our words should be connected with the reality. Therefore, in order to get a real acceptance of the topic, we need to say something about the topic and also we need to prove that we are doing some respective actions to prove it. So you touched on the topic of stigma earlier. How is today's organization's culture exposing and eliminating it? This is a very complicated topic because in many corporate cultures, employees don't feel safe talking about it. In many cultures, it's still a main motto up or out when employees have to work a lot and also they have to deliver at their best level despite of their personal troubles or despite of the help they may require. And therefore, these cultures, in these cultures, people are suffering more because they cannot express their own concerns. And therefore, the stigma idea appears because from one side, people want to be happy. From another side, the company culture does not support it at all. And I believe that all the employers should treat the topic seriously. Otherwise, people will see the difference between what's going on in reality and between the declared values and the corporate culture will suffer. With all that said, how does the right mental health and well-being support impact employee productivity? Are there any surprises or unexpected results? I can say for myself, when I feel happy, when I feel empowered, I can do significantly more. And what is more important, I can find some creative solution to any problem which appear at my work. But if I feel depressed, if I don't feel needed by my organization, my productivity will be on the lowest level. And we see the same uh, situations in many cases. The employees who are enjoying their life, who are enjoying their work, they can do significantly 10 times more than average employee who is struggling. And of course, there are a number of researchers supporting this. I cannot give you a specific percentage, but we see the difference. And what we see proves again that happier employees are more productive employees. Do you foresee any future changes in supporting mental health and well-being in today's work culture? If so, what might they be? First of all, I see that many organizations made this first step already. They started to talk about topic. They started to bring more awareness about the topic and uh, give more information about what can happen if this topic is not treated seriously. Then the second, some actions should be done. And of course, we are talking about traditional actions like doing psych some psychological counseling or adding some uh, lectures or awareness programs. But also the employers can go further 
they can integrate the employees into work the way then they don't suffer. For example, they can introduce some practices, stress relief practices, anger management practices. They can talk openly between employees and management how they can improve the relations. Because finally, mental health topics appear not only in after pandemic world or not only when people are working remotely. But these issues appear when you don't have a connection with your manager, when you cannot share an open feedback if you don't like something, or your manager does not appreciate your efforts and you feel useless and you feel don't need it. Therefore, all these approaches and all their contemporary HR approaches should be deeply integrated into work cultures. And therefore, all these efforts together will bring more value to mental health topic and employees' well-being. So much to think about. Before we go, do you have any final thoughts? I truly believe that our well-being and our happiness can be deeply connected with our work. And our employers and our managers can help us to feel better. But this is a huge effort. We need to admit the topic is complex. We need to increase the awareness of the topic. And of course, we need to treat this topic seriously. And then all of us will become happier at work. And our results, of course, will prove that this was the right move. Finally, where can people learn more about Exodus? We're doing a number of different publications as well as we have our own social media and the website, exnoscareers.com. We usually post articles, some photos, our vacancies. So you can follow us on LinkedIn. You can follow us on Facebook. And also you can check out our website, exnoscareers.com. Elena, thanks so much for sharing these valuable insights. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thanks also to you, our Careers Express viewers, for joining us. If you found this video useful, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel and follow us on social media as well. See you in a new video very soon.